Medicine Horse Speaks, Chapter 8, Horse Guardians. Imagine that there is this infinite, ever-expanding, love-filled body of energy that is able to create absolutely anything. In order for it to experience itself in a deeper and deeper way, it creates humans to live in a reality where they can then create what they want. Everything in their reality will be a reflection of what they're thinking, what they're feeling, and what they believe is true. That is how powerful these human creations are because they are made out of the exact same material of the divine intelligence that is behind absolutely everything in every single galaxy. So knowing that, I'm preparing to set the stage for the wisdom in this chapter. There was something put into place to ensure that as humans were evolving and experiencing themselves on the earth plane, they would be able to come back to a state of unity and divine intelligent consciousness or Christ consciousness. They would be able to know that only heaven exists in truth and everything else that they see, which could vibrate with the resonance of pain or suffering, murder or war or starvation, all of those ill visioned fates come from the consciousness of man believing that they can be so. It is a pretty intense reality here on earth. It is a very, very intense earth school. And in order for our divine intelligence to ensure that we would make it back to that unified presence within ourselves, animals were given to the people of earth. And animals on the earth would always carry love and unity consciousness in their heart. And they would never stray from that vibrational resonance. It would be somewhat of a fail safe to offer humanity and to sprinkle it all around the earth so that when humans come into contact with animals, they're able to remember where they came from initially, which is unity, wholeness, and love. And the earth walk is people learning how to get back into those states of consciousness and to realize that any negative or dualistic way of seeing the world is just a delusion. We can use our mind and the willpower we have inside of our hearts to only see heaven on earth and therefore be able to create heaven on earth. This is the backdrop for this entire chapter. It's this mentality about evolution and why we're here and what that looks like for people. As a horse guardian, which is what this chapter is really based on, you are a divine keeper of that love and unity consciousness. Horse guardians are people that see horses as gifts from God. They know that they hold a power inside of their hearts to heal. They know that they offer only love. And if we meet them in that vibrational resonance, we too will return to higher states of consciousness ourselves. So they are not just an evolutionary tool, but they are something on this earth that is in the 3D form that we can interact with in real time in order to become more evolved, more kind, more compassionate and in my personal opinion to be able to live as a guardian for horses is one of the highest spiritual blessings i have ever discovered <clears throat> i am someone that has traveled the world for over 15 years studying with massage certifications shiatsu acupressure herbology different teachers and gurus during different certification programs including yoga and the list goes on and on i went to over 10 countries lived in tents in the middle of forests meditated with zen monks went to the under earth with shamans you name it i did it and experienced it all in the name of evolving and becoming enlightened that seems to be my highest soul's desire in this lifetime i grew up with horses I've known horses my whole life. I've been obsessed with them since I was born and I've wanted to be around them and close to them for as long as I can remember. Something inside of me always knew that if I was in their presence, everything would be okay. In my early 20s, when I took off and traveled the world to find myself, I was looking for something. Not really realizing that horses had already given me the insight but it is about the journey and not the destination. I'm glad I traveled. I'm glad I expanded my awareness under so many different teachers, and I'm glad I became a teacher myself. 
And when everything was said and done, my biggest life's dream was to find a quiet private piece of land and to live alone with my horses, my chickens, and my cats. I wanted to be a horse guardian for the rest of my life. I wanted to help horses that needed help. I wanted to serve the ones I had like they were God's greatest gift to mankind. And I wanted to learn from them and have my life based around serving them. That's my biggest life's desire. And that is the life of being a horse guardian. So that's what I became. And what I've discovered being a guardian of horses is that the heart, the heart that they offer, which is the resonance of unconditional love is something that becomes a permanent fixture in my own emotional relationship with this world. I feel unstoppable. I feel expanded. I feel like I can accomplish anything in this world because I am living with God's greatest gift to mankind in a permanent way. And the way that I interact with my horses is a lot different than how typical equestrians would explain how they interact. Everyone has their own way of interacting with their own horses. Mine is about meeting them where they are, listening to their music, needs, and then answering them and providing them with what they need. Serving them in that way is what gives me the greatest life's pleasure. Knowing that they're being listened to, knowing that they're being cared for. I also love to rescue horses that are in dire situations. We just rescued a kill lot horse. I named her Nambi. This was a horse that was living with the family and for some reason, I don't know if her owners passed away or what came to pass, <clears throat> but she got sent to a kill lot. She ended up with a one-way ticket to Mexico. And when I saw her online, my heart said, this is a horse that is asking for my guardianship. So I followed through and I purchased Nambi and brought her home, caring for her health while I bond with her. And then the, in that whole following of my intuition, buying her, being with her, learning from her, the amount of fulfillment and joy and pleasure I feel in my everyday life is immeasurable. It's too big to even explain in words, what this lifestyle has done for me. A lot of what I see in the equestrian space is people utilizing horses for their own personal goals without holding any space to ask what the horse actually wants as well. I feel like as humanity raises in consciousness and as we evolve, as we come into a deeper understanding of what we truly are, which is that divine intelligence, we will be able to not only work with horses for our equestrian goals, but do it in a way that's symbiotic with the horse's own goals. So my prayer is that other horse people, if let's say they just want to be an accomplished hunter jumper and they go to buy a hunter jumper horse, my prayer is that they find a horse that they can ask, is this what you want to do with your life? Is this something that excites you? Or am I going to have to forcefully make you do this if I buy you? And to start differentiating that horses have their own voice and they have their own opinions. This is really what it means to be a horse guardian. It's to guard their own anonymity. And when you respect those opinions from the horse, that's when you unlock all of these beautiful spiritual gifts that they give to you. But the horse, a human is only able to feel these gifts when they meet the horse on the horse's level. You can't try and overpower the horse or undermine the horse. You have to be totally honest and transparent. You have to have completely open your heart and you have to have no agenda except for discovering the truth inside of that horse's heart. And then you have to be patient enough to give enough space because some horses won't answer you right away. Some horses need time to trust you before they answer you. Some horses will tell you right away. They're all different, just like humanity is different. And I try my hardest to wipe my brain clean before I meet with a new horse. I try to pretend that I don't know anything about horses, that this is my first time with another new horse, so I don't bring any preconceived notions or agendas into that horse's world. That way, when she does describe what she needs or wants or how she wants to live, I can actually hear her and be able to respond in a loving way. As horse guardianship expands on this planet, we will also see compassion and kindness and love spread greater through the rest of humanity in the world. Thank you so much for tuning in to this Medicine Horse Speaks Chapter 8. 
And I wanted to add a little something about the Lionsgate portal. I am intentionally launching chapter eight on August 8th, 2024 to utilize universal gifts even further, to spread this message even further. If you know someone that has a horse and would love to be able to receiving healings from their horse but doesn't know about that yet, send them to this chapter or send them to me and I'll be happy to chat with them. I am really looking forward to sharing chapter nine with you all. I love you all so very much. And in the background of this video, you'll see Nambi, the kilowatt horse we just rescued. This is me and her together the first day she was on the ranch. And I chose to just feed her really slowly, let her connect with me, let her know that she's safe and she's gonna get physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual nourishment with the rest of our lives together. Now it's been a week since Nambi has been here and she's a lot more relaxed. She loves letting me pet her. We're working on getting her feet fixed up, giving her more medicine, and she'll be in this quarantine space on the ranch for about another couple weeks until her health stabilizes. And then she can be released with the rest of the herd to run around the whole 23 acres out here. Nambi carries immense gifts and a lot of love. I feel blessed to be guarding her on the earth at this time so that she can come into her own full expression of who she is and share her heart and her light with the rest of the world without being hampered by human overpowering or ignorance. Medicine Horse Speaks is a movement, not just a book. So please share, like, and subscribe, and we will see you guys for chapter nine.